It's good to have you join us on the program Frontline. And my name is Shagun Fumi Oyedo. You know how we're doing right here on the show. I uh, will bring to you activities of uh, 2019. Taking a look at what we've been able to achieve you know, as the year runs out. We have some couple of days you know, left in this year 2019. And it's good for us to take a look at you know, how far we've gone in this year. And looking at that, we've been able to bring you know, different departments of the Nigerian Baptist Convention. And uh, they have been giving us insight into their activities. And you know, trust me, today will not be an exception because... We have one of the foremost institutions owned by the Nigerian Baptist Convention and uh, the man at the right center of uh, the development and activities is right here seated in the studio with me. And to have uh, this discussion for us to take a look at Bowen University is situated in uh, Iwo, Ocean State, Nigeria. I have the Vice Chancellor, Professor Joshua Olaleko Ogunwale, right here with me. You know, to have this discussion. It's good to have you join us on the show today, sir. Thank you, Shabu. Good morning. I'm so delighted to have you, you know, seated and right beside me, uh, you know, being one of the alumni of Bowen University, which I'm proud of. All right, now, we all know uh, uh, Bowen University, for, the, for those uh, that are Baptist, uh, who have been conversant with uh, the Bowen University and Baptists in general, Bowen University is known for excellence and godliness. Now, I, I'm going to have this is a core value of the Bowen University. And in this 21st century that we find ourselves, we might time it as you know, very uh, impossible sometimes to go in the godliness way and still attain uh, in excellence. And how has Bowen University been able to you know, marry the two together and still you know, progress? Yeah, okay, thank you, Shagun. I think um, the, our vision is excellence and godliness, and uh, it forms part of our core values too. Uh, our core values start with godliness and uh, excellence. With our vision, what we're saying with excellence and godliness is that the denominator on which you will build excellence must be godliness. If you want a sustainable excellence, then um, you have to develop certain godly traits. And this cannot happen except you have an encounter with the Lord, the Lord Jesus himself. And so that is the, um, the desire and the thinking of the progenitors of the Bowen University um, project. Um, what we have been doing in the past one year plus with um, this is that um, we celebrate every um, indicator of uh, excellence in our students and staff. And usually, you know, we usually have midweek uh, service uh, from 10.30 to noon. Uh, every work stops and we go to the chapel on Wednesdays. And um, that is one way in which we point everyone to the fact that whatever you see happen in Bowen University is because God has allowed it. Whatever success you see, whatever progress you see, is not because of the strength of a man. But this is God. And so we must keep going back to return thanks to him. Now, within that, those, that program in chapel, we, we usually identify uh, maybe students that have gone on competition and come out top, or students that have done one thing or the other, maybe in games, in sports, or staff who have been able to showcase um, their, their professional capability. And then we bring them out. We actually really celebrate them. We, we, we they share briefly what they've done. We decorate them with our Bowen souvenir. And then we ask that they should be prayed for. And then we usually, immediately after the chapel, they go to have a lunch, either with the deputy vice chancellor, with the dean of students up here, depending on the whether it's a student or staff. And so those small ways motivate, I see it motivates students. I've seen students wanting to um, go on break and then we couldn't do that and we say, okay, let's just give you this advocate. They say, no, can you wait until we come back? And so on. So I see that um, this little thing in our corner, I've been able to motivate the students. So what, that's one way in which um, we took and post uh, excellence with uh, godliness. All right, uh, let's go uh, uh, another way, uh, talking about 2019. Now, what, what are the physical developments that uh, you can attest to in this year so far? 
Well, um, in the year so far, there have been a series of um, uh, progress, you see, with Bowen University. Let me start with the programs. Um, we've started the engineering program. We started this year. That is uh, the mechatronic engineering and electrical engineering. And then um, that is moving the university towards um, the, the world of engineering. And that means laboratories and whatever um, are going to begin to surface in the area of engineering. Um, we, we are actively pushing too in the area of medical laboratory, okay, which are programs which um, the, that attract the interest, interest of students. Ditto for public health. Those are programs that um, came up, all right, just recently. Um, when we talk about the university entirely, we've been able to address the business model of the university. Um, I remember saying at a point in time that Bowen is at an inflection point, and at an inflection point, you will need to address um, the culture of the, of the people. You need to address your product. You need to address your business uh, model. Now we, we have moved from the department faculty-based system to what we call a modified collegiate system. Modified collegiate in the sense that um, it's different from the usual collegiate that others know. Um, with the modified collegiate um, um, model we're running in Bowen University, uh, departments have been collapsed. The emphasis is on programs. Okay, so um, you will not see Department of Biochemistry. You will see Biochemistry program, okay, with a program coordinator, all right? The program the coordinator does not sit like um, an administrative head of the department. He sits like a research team leader or a discipline team leader. These are two different things. It does more of um, facing the academic aspect rather than the administrative aspect of it. Now, we have moved the entire administrative thing there to the, to the college level. Now, the, the, the faculty system are giving way to, to the college system. In the college system, you have a provost, all right? You may, depending on the kind of college, you may have a vice provost, all right? Then you have a college administrator who serves like a registrar for that college. All right, and then you have a college accountant that serves like a bosser for that college. So a student may not have anything to do with the vice chancellor, may not have anything to do with the registrar. Everything he or she wants to do ends at his or her college. All right, it's like a one-stop thing. Okay, so um, all the the administrative work that is supposed to take place in the department have been moved to the college level. So that what you have before in departments and in faculty now resides in the college. The provost has the power now to approve a fund up to a certain limit. Every college have a certain amount that has been budgeted for them. And so they keep spending. Meaning that you don't need to come, every paper doesn't need to come to the vice chancellor for approval. You want to buy something for 300 naira, you must get a paper that is worth 200 naira to write and ask for these and so on. So those things ends at the college. That gives um, the vice chancellor and his team an ability to pursue what you call institutional advancement rather than paperwork on a daily basis. So that's one um, strong um, thing we've been able to achieve in, um, in the year uh, 2019. It's just at the embryonic stage, all right, and so, but um, people are getting adjusted to it. Now, let me talk about um, in the area of collaboration, okay, we, this administration, when it came on board, um, focused more on ag collaborations that will be active. We, we don't want a passive collaboration. And so, we, we are taking time to pick our collaborators were taking time to be friends. Let me say without boasting that we've gotten a series of um, requests from outside this country wanting to collaborate with Bowen. But there are many that we turn our back to because they're not the kind of thing 
we are looking for. Um, let me say quickly that we are in a collaboration, a very strong collaboration with um, the State University of Virginia. Okay, and um, that collaboration, we are excited about it because that collaboration is going to um, bring to Bowen and um, say to Nigeria too, is going to change our, the narrative on space science research in Nigeria. We are going to be bringing what you will call um, uh, the, the Super Dan radar um, that will be um, measuring the perturbation, the disturbance within the equatorial region. Now, let me say there is no Super Dan anywhere in the world that measures the equatorial region. So it's, um, it's a first of its kind among the Super Dan groups. There, been, there are series of Super Dan equipment and radar um, that are working Iceland um, uh, in the tropics and whatever. But at the equator, this will be the very first one. We're excited as much as the, um, the State University of Virginia, too, is excited. The National Space Research Development Agency uh, in Abuja also has uh, joined us to collaborate, and we re actually need them in this work. So that's one area in which we have a very active and positive collaboration. Another one is that we're collaborating with Calvin University. Actually, in, um, sometimes in March um, next year, by the grace of God, the president or provost of the Calvin University will be visiting Bowen. We've actually invited her and uh, she has actually agreed to come. Uh, in, while we were talking about renewing our collaboration, we came forth to say some things we want, uh, we, we desire, and um, the, we had this meeting um, by Skype. And uh, they, they also asked, well, how committed is Bowen? And uh, my response was that if you want to know the commitment of Bowen, pay Bowen a visit. Okay? And then um, in the course of that discussion, she accepted the invitation. So she will come in. And one of the areas we are going to be looking at, actually, Calvin University had been doing something with um, uh, Bowen University when they were Calvin College, all right, um, in the area of nursing. <laughs> But now we want to look at the entire um, health sciences along with our computer um, system, uh, the computer science. Uh, another area of, um, that we've seen um, our students um, within the past one year emerge is in the uh, computer programming competition that involves all other universities that was uh, done at the National Mathematical Center um, some few months ago. Um, to, to many people's greatest surprise, but we are not surprised anyway, um, the, the team, the Bowen team, actually came top. And um, by next week, they will be leading the other teams to Egypt. Okay, I think currently they are, they are in Lagos for visa and, and, and so. So those are some of the achievements. In the area of physical, develop, physical planning and development, let me mention too that um, the university in November 1st um, opened the first, its first uh, smart hostel. Uh, it's a 288 bed, female bed hostel um, in the university. I would not be surprised if it's the first uh, smart hostel in any university in Nigeria. Okay. Uh, at the same time, too, we, we just opened a big edifice for. Um, physiotherapy and nursing um, program. Um, they've been having some challenges with space. And so where this was done uh, in collaboration with the Bowen University Parents Association Forum. And so those are a few things um, I can mention about progress that uh, Bowen University had made in the past one year. Right, uh, uh, well, it's quite a surprise. Uh, Bowen University has been at the forefront and ever since we've had uh, the chapel, which has been a very good one for the Bowen University in, in Africa and beyond, and also the library, you know, in Bowen University is something to, you know, look forward to in, in Nigeria and in Africa as it were. Now the smart, you know, hostel coming around is something you don't want to miss. And, you know, if you have been thinking of a university to put your wall, Bowen University is right there. 
you know, to give you the best, the very best, you know, our, our education in Nigeria. Now, talking about education side in Nigeria, uh, we can't shy away from the fact that unemployment is on the high, high, high rise. What is Bowen University doing to ensure that our students that graduate from Bowen University are self-sustaining, or rather, you know, they have the practical knowledge of what they have learned in the space of four or five, you know, whichever the case might be of uh, schooling? Okay, thank you, Shagun. Um, the, when this administration came on board, one of the first things we addressed and uh, we started talking about was the fact that you cannot work teaching or learning the way we were taught. And you will get the kind of results that is expected um, for the jobs of today or tomorrow. And so one of the first things we did was to focus more on our entrepreneurship program. Okay, Bowen had been known for years, decades now, with skill acquisition in the area, uh, in that aspect of entrepreneurship. But like I keep saying, I wouldn't send my daughter to the university to read law, only for my daughter to come and open um, a, a hairdressing salon. I mean, I, I don't need to send someone to school to open um, a formidable and successful hairdressing salon. There is more to entrepreneurship than mere skill acquisition. Okay, now, the, the skill acquisition may be good for students who are maybe below average. But when you are dealing with average students and above, then you must begin to change the narrative towards knowledge-based entrepreneurship. Okay, now, um, that is where most universities keep missing out of it. And that is why it becomes difficult for them to assess the kind of job, all right, that the world is looking for today. One of the things you see, for instance, look at DK Chukumerije, all right? Um, if, if before someone tells you that um, in the area of uh, literature, that somebody can be self-employed, you, 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 you may want to say, no, it's not possible. But you see someone who have used his knowledge in such a way, develop himself in such a way that um, he, could, he, could be, he could be on his own, he could employ people to make things work. Now, those are the kind of things we expose our students to. Another way we teach is this. In Bowen, the, the student lead the learning. Okay, it's the, the lecturers now act more like facilitators than teachers. Okay, and that's why the first thing we're, we're doing now is that um, most of our students will begin to read their notes or whatever from the applications. So there are apps that have been developed for them to be able to connect and read. So that when they come to class, it's actually about discussion. It's actually about group work. It's actually about um, field experiences. It's, it's not um, the kind you pick your pen and pick your, and uh, you are listening to dictation, which had been the way we went to school, okay? And um, those, those kind of things are the things that can actually open the mind. We also take them more. I think the, in the past one year, Bowenites, that's what we call our students, um, have gone out on excursion more than what they've done in the past three years put together. Okay, currently as I'm speaking with you, we have 10 students in Unical now. They arrived late yesterday night and they were, they're going to be involved in the national debate competition in Unical. All right, we have our students move around. We encourage that, okay, because we know that uh, exposure-based learning is one way in which you can also address the challenges of, uh, of the job market, even for today and tomorrow. Uh, finally, one other thing we do also is this. We, we bring great minds to the university to interact and connect with our students. Uh, recently, we, there was this uh, young man we saw on uh, the social media that was using some certain rotors to, um, to, to make turbines, and uh, he actually um, showed a clip where he placed those um, turbines in, a, in water, 
and was able to generate electricity. Okay, we flew him in from Calabar when we located him. We told him, come talk to our students. What are the things? How have you been able to do this? So he connected it with our students. He spoke with them. They had a good time, and we saw it's a good time. We asked him, would you want to come on board to join the Bowen project? Because let me say, currently, he's with us in Bowen. Wow. Now, um, recently, too, there is this um, one Mr. Obasanjo that, um, that developed one uh, amphi, um, a car, maybe, how do you call it? Yes. And, um, and uh, we actually invited him to Bowen. And uh, we paid for him to bring that, that car. And um, he came to Bowen. Student looked at it. Student picked him up. Student engaged him. Student asked him how he was able to develop, move those cabs to do whatever. Now, we, he had a good time too because he told me when he was finishing that the, the way they, he was engaged was quite challenging. And now, that's the kind of minds, that's the kind of way we teach our students. In the fact that um, you just don't see something and just quickly uh, swallow it. You want to check, you want to critique, you want to analyze, you want to ask questions. So this kind of learning is not the way we, you find in conventional universities. Okay? And that's why when last year we had a student that graduated, she was actually one of our best around students. And then um, I remember a firm actually contacted me that well, if this lady could be posted to Lagos, he could come and serve with us, and uh, thereafter, we, we may engage her once she pass our, uh, our test. And I said, that's all right, but um, it's a good firm, but it's not the kind of thing I want for my students. Okay, yeah, I have a response, response to pass the information to her, which I did. Now, just sometime this year, immediately after the NYC, <coughs> had reasons to call her. And I said, well, so what are you doing now and so on? And of course, she's already been engaged with PwC. And what was it? And I told her, what are the processes like? And she shared those, um, those questions, those experiences, those various faces, okay, that she passed through. We had one too in, um, in HP, okay, that, um, that finished and um, you know that HP is very competitive. Okay, and they are one of the tops in this country. And then um, after um, the passing through almost about three phase of um, interview process and so on, he emerged one of the tops. Now, so this strengthens our harm to let us know that the way this new pattern we are facing, we are taking to teach the students to expose them and so on, is really working. So um, for us, I think there is no going back. All right, uh, that's quite uh, interesting to know that uh, Bowen University is making uh, headway in you know, all of these and trying to change the status quo of our uh, education system in Nigeria. Now, let's take a look at you know, uh, the whole hub, which is quite important and necessary in, in learning. Now, Bowen University is uh, fully residential for all students. Now, which means that there will be need for emotional stability of the students at some time. You know, what's Bowen University doing or what have you done in a uh, few months of this year? You know, you cannot keep very young minds, um, restless people, numbering almost about uh, 4,000 laws on one campus. And then um, won't be, they, you won't engage them in activity. If you try that, you have a huge problem in your hands. So one of the things we're doing is um, developing and improving on our sport and games infrastructure. We just finished working on um, the basketball court, which was actually, we did that in collaboration with Wema Bank. Okay. Um, we, we also, we will soon begin to re, re, renovate and change the face of our volleyball court because um, we just got uh, support from um, Bowen Microfinance Bank. Okay, so we're going to be doing that. Detail for long tennis and squash. All right, now the, this administration had empowered the student, um, um, the student uh, representative council, okay, that um, they can organize 
whatever social life they want on campus. All they need to do is to pass it through us and we give them the necessary approval. Reason being this, we may be too far off in what we call our social life, all right, from what those young people take as social life. Our own social life may be boring to them. So, like, and like we said, our kind of learning is that the students lead the learning. So, most of the social life on campus now is led by the students. They do it, they organize it. We just supervise to make sure that it doesn't get out of hand. That's what we've been doing. Right, that's quite interesting. Now, you will agree with me that uh, in Nigeria today, the issue of uh, insecurity you know, has been uh, one of the major issues in Nigeria, which means that Bowen University takes our uh, security quite uh, serious and you know, quite interesting. And recently, uh, we witnessed uh, the rebranding of the security uh, unit in, in Bowen University. You know, what, what brought about that idea? Rebranding? Rebranding. Okay. Um, let me s say that um, the rebranding story of Bowen University has started before I came in. For the uh, security um, unit? Uh, uh, pardon? The, for the security yes, unit? Yes, I'm now. coming. I'm, I'm coming that way. I, I just want to lay the history okay, clear. Right. We, we have um, a pro chancellor and chairman of council who came in from the corporate ward. And then when he saw what was happening, he started talking about repositioning and rebranding. Okay, now, it's like they never made any significant headway, even or we, the school, the community couldn't catch his thinking until we came. All right, so when we came, we decided that we plan to take the repositioning and rebranding to the next level. Okay, and um, one first area we noticed is that um, the, the security outfit of the university is 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 not professional okay uh, and um, another thing because it's not um, at times they they leave most of the entrances or means to come into the university make them a bit porous and so one of the first thing we did was to address that matter and you know in most cases um, just like the bible say strike the shepherd and the sheep will scatter so the, in most cases too, if you want the sheep not to scatter, then make the, lead, the shepherd strong so that it will, not be, it will be difficult for him to be, to be stricken. And so what we did was to actually address the leadership of, um, of um, the security. And what we did is when the period of this one was ending, we invited three professionals to come on the interview uh, panel. We, we made it a, a, a two-stage interview. We brought in a retired Brigadier General we, uh, who, who, who is a combatant um, man. We brought in a serving um, colonel and we brought in a serving commission of police. And so we placed them, we, we just gave them the, the papers and we, we sat behind and allowed them to uh, advise us. And they did that, they made their choice, they, they were really very professional. And to a large extent, um, their, their individual assessments converge. Mm -hmm. And so we, the next thing was to now shortlist and invite those ones to have an interview with us. So uh, after that, we were, we were able to pick someone who will lead our um, uh, security outfit. Don't forget that um, what this administration is doing is that whoever is going to take leadership in Bowen University, all right, is life must reflect our five core values. Godliness, excellence, entrepreneurship, innovation, and social responsibility. Now, that does become what we do when we bring you on a recruitment interview panel, all right? We want to be sure that you, your life can reflect our core values. We want to be sure that if this guy comes out and is working in the marketplace, okay, and our core values is moving to, they will find a point to converge. And people will say, we bet you are from Bowen. I say, yes, but why? I say, no, I just know it. Mm -hmm. All right? So that we've seen um, taken through, it could be an expensive way of recruiting, but we've seen that that have actually helped in uh, professionalizing our security outfit. They do internally, we train our security. 
every two two months now they go to they go to training internally okay we've been able to change build, boost their morale and then we've been able to make them know also once in a while we also have a bible study with with them so you you will see um the security at the bowen gate high very polite or talk to you but firm okay even when you when the person the 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 visitor is getting angry and saying all sorts of things you won't see a bowen security talk back so those are the kind of um, um, exposure that we have been able to pass them through in the process of rebranding them. All right, now let's take a look at uh, the the year okay, the year 2019 is already going to an end now. Mm. Now, what, what are the uh, things you look forward to in that 2020, or rather that we should look forward to in the year in the coming years? All right. Um, recently, we had a series of uh, retreats. And what we're telling ourselves is that um, you could have a very, there are many good universities in Nigeria, but you don't have a great university. And um, what you talk about uh, greatness, you're talking about consistency in what you are doing, consistency in getting results, putting a human face to what you are doing. It's not just about profit alone. Putting a human face to what you are doing, influencing the society with what you are doing. Okay, and um, that is what we are telling ourselves we want to step out boldly to be in the coming year. Okay, that we want to be able to, um, to lead great discussions, all right, about both national discourse and what have you. Uh, let me say that already sometimes next year, in the early, early quarter, first quarter of next year, we're going to be bringing all the Fulbright alumni together. The Fulbright is the flagship of the United States scholarship, okay? And those who have enjoyed this in Nigeria, we're going to be converging at, um, at Bowen University. And uh, we're going to be talking about uh, one of the major big issues that seems as if the, the government is not addressing the way one will expect them to address. And that is the issue of drugs and substance abuse, okay? Um, Today, we, we've seen the United Nations telling us um, that a survey was, being, was conducted in Nigeria and about 14.4 million Nigerians are into drugs and substance abuse and what have you. We've seen government set up a, um, a tax force to address it. We've seen so much talk about it, but we've seen nothing on the road. And so we, we felt that well, some of the best minds in this country need to converge. And that, of course, that is what scholarship is about. Um, you're a scholar to give back to the society. And so we are bringing all together. We're going to spend within the five days to really talk about this, put together a position, and find a way to get it to government. Now, that's, that, that's one of the things I'm talking about, about um, leading the park. Okay? Um, we, we are hoping, too, that um, sometimes in the year, um, Two, we are going to be converging in Bowen to have meetings of all space scientists in Nigeria. Anybody that is doing anything related to the science of space, okay, we converge much within the middle or later year um, quarter of the year, maybe second or third quarter of next year. All right, all over the country, we converge at Bowen. At that time, we expect that the Super Dan radar would have been installed. And um, we are going to sit down to draw a chart of what kind of research that we need to deliver to this nation, to move this nation um, in, in, the, in the development of space research or space science from where it, it is now and uh, to the next level. So it's not something that um, one person or one school can do, but somebody must um, take the initiative. Somebody must lead the discussion. Somebody must catalyze the action. And that is what um, Bowen in the coming years is planning to do. So that um, there, is, there is no serious, important national issue. Or issue that has to do with regional issue, have to do with Africa, that um, we will not um, uh, do everything to make a meaningful contribution. 
on um, on it and give a um, profound solution on how the nation or the region needs to move forward. So that's our plan for the future. All right, uh, we've heard the plan for the future years to come, and we do hope that uh, you know it will be a good one, and we are looking forward to that. But when University have been you know striving every day to be one of the foremost you know university institution in Nigeria, and they've been achieving that uh, thanks to the uh, vice chancellor and his team. Uh, it's good to have you in the studio today, and it's good to have you know uh, insight into what. Uh, uh, You've been doing in the in the past uh, few months of this year, and you know what uh, the uh, years to come holds for the university. I hope that I uh, believe that the parents and you know guardians are listening to us right now. You know they have a feel of that, and they are rest assured that uh, the children are in safe hands. And we're happy to have you in the studio. And the discussion has been with the vice chancellor, uh, Professor Joshua. It's good uh, to have you on the show, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, you so much for coming it's around. It's a pleasure. All right, my Thank name you. is Shagun Fumi. Oh, you do. Come join us again on Monday. <laughs>